you know, when you become a trader, your perspective on life changes, changes in general, that you always realize everything that you do has a risk. Uh, everything's like a probability. Um, so I th I'd say like my life has changed since becoming a trader in the way that I just think in general about, about the way that I approach risk, the way that I approach like thinking about something before I do it. Uh, just, you know, you obviously have to have your risk management in place before you do anything in life, understand the risks, understand the rewards, and then make a decision of is it worth doing this or not and uh so I, I guess like trading changed my way i like think about a lot of things and approach life in general i would not say it's made me more fearful i'd say it's it's just made me approach the way i think about something differently but i wouldn't say it's a, it makes me take less risks or or more risks necessarily just changes the way i approach life in, in terms of something i may have just done before and just you know, went for it. Now I'm a little bit more methodical, thinking about you know weighing out something more before I do it. But I wouldn't say it's more likely to make me, or you know, I'm not going to be as scared to do something that I would have done before. It's just that now I'd, I maybe just like approach it in a different way. I'm just weighing things out before I do something. Maybe a bit more sensible. <laughs> so, but but not in like a scared way or a fearful way. Just make more sensible decisions. <laughs> So I started investing when I was 18 years old and um, yeah, the assets that I was investing in primarily at the start were NVIDIA and Apple. Those were like the main ones I went into. I would say no, I didn't really have like an investment goal per se. I just kind of had money in my bank and I realized th this isn't really a good place for me to have my money. I felt that there's a lot more opportunity in the stock market. I was also... 18 so it's like at this age especially you can you can be more risk adverse and so I felt actually just kind of like I wasn't really thinking about the risk like I was a person that was I was really 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 scared to lose my money like I didn't want to lose that money but I also felt like stocks were a really safe place to put the money and I was I was pretty certain I'd make money with them more so than I would in a bank um at the end of the day I knew there was the risk it could go down but I felt really the opportunity that was kind of low um so yeah, I went for, yeah, like at the time they weren't nowhere near as big as they were now, but I was like really into computers, really into technology. And like, I saw the future of these stocks. So they were like fundamental picks. And well, I mean, now like 12 years later, obviously they were, they were really good picks, but um, yeah, at the time, just, I felt that they were long-term really good, good choices. And um, yeah, I went into them with no real, um, no real, goals or targets of those stocks just buy and hold it for rather than putting the money in the bank i didn't think oh in one year i'm going to take profits or anything like that uh, non-financial advice opinion uh, stocks are still a, a safe investment for myself personally i am like very comfortable investing in stocks the reason why i'm more comfortable believing in the future of a stock is because it has like a real world company company behind it like you, have, you know, if I think of a company like Apple, the probability of Apple dropping 90% is very unlikely because they're a massive trillion dollar company, thousands and thousands of employees. You know, there's a real working product behind it. Everybody, you know, lots of people have iPhones. Right? There's a real product behind it that's not going to die overnight. Whereas when you compare it to something inside the cryptocurrency market, like an altcoin, the probability of an altcoin dying overnight, well, let's just say it's a lot higher than a, a real world asset sort of thing like Apple or Amazon or, or Microsoft. So for me, yeah, I'm still comfortable investing in stocks because yeah, at the end of the day, I can actually see what I'm buying or what I'm putting my money towards a stock share rather than a crypto altcoin, which I have no idea who the, even what the product is. You know, it's just a white paper at the end of the day. No, not many of them have working products. Stock market at the moment is in a little bit of a, um, a hard place because it's it's dropping really hard at the moment. Well, it dropped really hard. It rallied up and it it rallied up to like a level of resistance that we were already waiting for during the whole of that rally, and it rejected at that level. So for me, it's like just rejected off of its key retest. And if this key retest is not reclaimed, then the stock market can it can drop again really heavily and you get like your you know your your sell off the correction and then you expect another large sell off to break that last low so if this is correct then now 
so to speak, would not be the best time to invest in a stock in the short term because you're expecting another drop to come. In the long term, it's not the end of the world investing if you invest slowly into the stock because overall I'm expecting another rise. So personally, I've got like, let's say an outlook of five to 10 years. I'd be comfortable buying a stock now because I'm sure in five to 10 years I'm gonna be up. But I'm not going all in today. You know, I'd slowly average into this over the next like year or so. Then I can buy here, I can buy if it drops down more. I'm happy to do that because this is more an investment than a trade. Uh, you know, if I'm actively trading it, then I would use a different strategy. But for an investment of the long term on a stock, yeah, for me, I'm comfortable doing it now with technical analysis in the back of my mind, understanding it's going to drop more or very likely going to drop more. So I'm not going all in now. So I'm like combining investment strategy with trading strategy to know the best times to invest. Like I don't want to invest right up at the heights because that's just that's just silly. But we've already dropped, you know, already like 20 percent. So if, if I'm expecting, let's say, another 30 percent drop, I'm not going all in now. I'll slowly average it down into where I think is the bottom and then maybe I start to buy more. Uh, of a percentage. So yeah, that's the way that I'd like to look at this. Don't really trade so much for this, but commodities are something that I'm a little bit interested in. The reason I'm not so interested in commodities such as gold or silver is because I just feel that everybody is always saying, oh, wait, if the drop comes in the stock market, you need to be in gold. And like, for me, it's just like, it's a really created, a really like crowded option. And so, I don't know, for me personally, I'm not always like against in a conspiracy theory guy or I don't wanna be following everybody, but for me, it's just, I don't know. I just have no interest in, uh, yeah, I don't have so much interest in the commodity market. It also moves really slow. I, I mean, I'll track it just because I trade Bitcoin and Bitcoin and, and gold are, are somewhat correlated. So it's helpful for me to track gold, but I don't like actively pay so much attention because I'm not trading it. Um, Whereas I am actually trading the stock market. So I'm trading the stock market. I have an active investments in the stock market. I'm really focused on it. Like gold, I'm not so interested in investing in. So I'm not, and I'm not actively trading it. So I have less of an interest per se. And so, yeah, for me, there's more risk in commodities or there's less upside potential. So at the end of the day, I'm investing to have upside potential. And although gold might be like, anti-inflation might be a good uh, safe haven for my money. I'm not really searching for a safe haven for my investments. I'm searching to make, you know, as much percentage rise as pos possible. And gold doesn't have the same upside potential as the stock market, for example. So for me, I'm less interested in it in, in that regards. Um, so yeah, mainly the stocks, um, maybe some things such as like natural gas, um, be interested in, yeah, but mainly it's the stock market and cryptocurrency market. I, I mean, I track other assets such as the Forex. I'm tracking Forex. But it's also because I have an active interest in that because, you know, I'm holding different currencies. So I need to know when's the best time to switch my euros into Great British Pounds or into the dollar. So I have an active reason to want to know about the Forex market. But it's just kind of more about my personal thing rather than I actually want to trade Forex. But I'm not actually don't like trading Forex. It's more I need to know about it. Um, so yeah, I keep my eye on a few other things. I'm, I'm dabbling in and out, but main things for me are stock and crypto. So for me, they are very, really, really, really important. And also like one of, um, I know that I just, maybe, maybe, maybe be like you just said, you don't want to have like these safe haven assets, but, I, but for me, yeah, I'm not interested in gold, but I'm very interested in, in, in housing. Also, Housing, in my opinion, still has like a lot of upside potential. Like some of the houses that I've bought have doubled, tripled in price. Um, you know, see gold over the past, you know, few years, it's exactly the same price as it was like 10 years ago. So it's like the 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 the, the, the differences are for me, real estate is really safe, in my opinion, like real estate is real estate is a really safe option, commercial real estate, really safe option. You're almost guaranteed money um every month through renters. Yeah, period free renters and at the end of the day if i want to sell off the asset pretty much every house i've ever bought has gone up in price so i personally wouldn't sell unless i was forced to sell i would not sell my real estate because it, it generates passive income every month which is just a positive um and also the way that i invest is, is i never use debt so there's no mortgages it's just i have cash i'll put it into real estate uh, so i would personally never obtain debt 
to buy anything. I've, I'm really against having any sort of debt. But if you have the, the cash and you're thinking where is a good place to put it, well, obviously investments are very good, but also you want to have a diversified portfolio. So I wouldn't go all in the stock market, all into crypto. I'd split up a little bit of crypto, a little bit of stock market, a little bit of real estate. And then, yeah, then you're diversified should the worst happen and something crashes. But you're going to hope that not everything crashes at the same time or not at the same speed of, of a crash. So yeah, that's the way that I'd approach that. For me, yeah, land for building, yeah, like if I could see a plot of land that has the potential to build on, I'd buy that straight away because I think this is only going to increase in price the more, I know there's like this whole thing about the depopulation right now, but I think at the end of the day, there's only going to be more demand for houses, more demand of, of people wanting to own land. So for me, like land to build on is a really, really, really great investment. I think this is only going to go up and, and it's beneficial to have this land for agric agricultural farming. I mean, I have no experience in that. And so for me personally, I wouldn't buy land to farm on because I have no experience. I, I, I think, yeah, I could hire someone and, and create a job like this. But I've already got my hands in different places. So for me, taking on another thing, like doing something to do with farming would be that I don't have the time to do all these different things. So I understand it's beneficial. And if you have some experience or you know somebody, great, great investment. But for me personally, it's not wouldn't be something I'd inter be interested in because I, I don't have the time to, to even think about that. <laughs> Yeah, for me, also investing in companies, be it yeah, startups or already uh, you know, built company, that also does interest me. Um, I'm not the type of guy that likes to invest and have a lot of input in the company. But if I foresee like an opportunity that I believe this company is going to go really far or do really be really successful, I would invest into it. But I wouldn't be wanting to have any say in the company because I know what I'm good at and I know what they're good at. And if so, if they have potential, I wouldn't want to come in just because I have money and say, hey, I'm going to buy the company, do this, do that. I'd be like, no, I see some potential here. If I could like invest, brilliant. You can buy more stock and sell the stock, for example. You can become bigger. I can help you become bigger. But I'd, I'd let them do everything they want to do. I wouldn't try and change anything. But for me, yeah, that's always something I'd be on like the look. Not actively. I'd never look out specifically for an investment. But I've had people like come to me and say, hey doing this, we need an investment, are you interested? You know, I'd, I'm not going to say instantly yes, but, you know, I'll take a look and say, oh, yeah, this is quite interesting. Yeah, why not? Let's go for it. Um, so, yeah, it's not something I actively search for, but if there's an opportunity that arises and it's interesting for me, I'd have to have, like, some sort of interest in it and understand it. And if that's the case, then, yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah why not? I'd, I'd put an investment into a company. When I think about it, I've never really had a bad investment because I got, I started investing in the stock market uh, at the start of a massive bull market. So I got really, really lucky when I started investing in the stock market. I also, when I started to then make money in the stock market and started to invest in real estate, this was also like relatively like early on, obviously not really, really early on, but relatively early on. And so I've had like no drawdown in the stock market, I've never like been in red. I've made money and then lost profits, but I've never been like underwater in the stock market on an investment. I've never been, a, I've never bought a house that's saying, and the, the, the housing market's pulled back. So yeah, I mean, I'm very lucky in that regards that I've always been buying at, a, you know, buying at good times. So I've never wouldn't be able to say I've made like a, a really bad investment luckily because yeah, <laughs> thankfully I've never made a bad investment. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd say stocks and real estate are my favourite investments. Okay. So for me, tech, uh, I know some people will have like really different opinions on that, but I still think tech, the bubble can continue. I think pharmaceutical stocks, they are never going to be... I don't foresee them having like massive drawdowns and massive crashes. I think pharmaceuticals, tech, and I would also say like an indirect like buy of, of anything to do with real estate or agriculture. Yes, uh, you know, directly pinned to to real estate would be also a healthy investment in the stock market.
I would never tell anyone that's too risky, don't do this, because I think at the end of the day, that's somebody's decision. If they want to take on a risk that I wouldn't take, that's up to them. I know myself personally what I wouldn't do, but someone else might be like, hey, this is amazing, I'm going to go all in. I'd be like, wow, I wouldn't even touch that in my life, but you do what you want to do. Uh, but I myself, for example, wouldn't be searching out um, mainly uh, I have the experience in the stock market that I was going to say cryptocurrency market about this, but obviously in the stock market, you've got like penny stocks. Like I wouldn't be, I'm never investing in like penny stocks or actively searching like a penny stock. For me, this is, yeah, you can make loads of money, but it, this for me is not a good use of my time. It's the same in the cryptocurrency market. You get people that are searching out like a, uh, an altcoin you've never heard of in your life. Like in my opinion, yeah, you might be one in a million lucky. Uh, like I got lucky with Sheeb. Like, but that was extremely, extremely, extremely lucky. I even know I got extremely lucky with this. So it's like, at the end of the day, if you're searching out these random altcoins, you might think, hey, I've found the needle in the haystack. I'm going to get ultra lucky and make a load of money. The probably is, are you not? Like, that's just a fact. You're, you're really not likely to do it. So I would say at the end of the day, do whatever you want. Do what makes you happy. But I would not be investing in random altcoins or even low cap altcoins. I'm going to stick to the main ones. Again, I'm mainly trading the cryptocurrency market. I'm not really investing in cryptocurrency, but still, I'm only going to be trading tops, top, top assets with high market caps, lots of volume through it, flowing through them. So, yeah, I would kind of say play a lot of caution if you're around, if you're searching for these alt altcoins. Also, you're going to get shield. I don't know how many altcoins. This is the next big thing. This is going to be the next times 100. This is where you want to do it. And let me tell you, if someone's saying that, it's not going to be the case. Like, very, 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 very unlikely. If it's all over YouTube and you're getting shielded, it's going to make a lot of money. Um, maybe in the long term, but in like, right, this, this thing's going to times 100 in, in this year. And it's probably not going to. They're, they're, they probably have some sort of ulterior motive of why they're shilling you this. And I think cryptocurrency is like shield central. Everybody's in it for themselves. You have to be really, 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 really careful because the majority of people are not here for you. They're here to take advantage of you. And so, yeah, I personally would just stay clear of all of that because it's really good to sell the dream. But yeah, you're probably going to get wrecked. So I would not be looking at that. But again, do whatever you want at the end of the day. <laughs> So I, I suppose I would like also to say to myself, like, what would I do today if I was just starting? And I, I would say to myself, right now, the market conditions are so much different than when I started. Right now, it's not as easy as just buy and make money. You, you definitely need to know what you're on about. I mean, we can see it now. Like, you look, look at the, the stock market over the last 10 years, and it's, it's literally like vertical. And so something can only go up that much, that vertically, without having major pullbacks. And we're starting to see it over the past few years. Like we've seen major pullbacks. Obviously, the start of 2020, there was a major pullback. And now we're in 2022. We're getting starting to get pullbacks. So it's not no longer this vertical market that I literally would say to myself, I can just buy this tomorrow. I'm probably going to be making money. And it was so easy. I could just buy and I'd make money. It was really I wasn't that like just, oh, I'm just going to buy this. Amount. I was thinking about my decisions, but I was also thinking, uh, what's the worst that can happen? I'll make 3% rather than 10%. So it was really, really quite easy. But now it's really difficult. So what would I say to myself if I was starting today? I think I would say, you definitely need to know what you're doing before you start putting your money into this. You cannot just buy something and expect to make money anymore. There's a massive opportunity of shorting markets. Um, when I first started, I was only longing. I would never short. And now I think shorting is such an integral part of almost like investing to hedge yourself on these pullbacks. You cannot just buy because you're probably going to, you know, there's a high likelihood now that you get drawdowns. So you need to know how to short or at least understanding the pullbacks, why they happen, where markets are likely to reverse. So I think like the most fundamental thing as a beginner, someone that's never done the, done this before is before you put in money, educate yourself, you know, do something to educate yourself of understanding why the markets move like they move, where markets are drawn to, what's liquidity, um, you know, basic things like this, knowing where to place a stop loss, knowing where to place a target. Again, if you're investing, you might not want to know about stop losses and targets, but you are going to want to know about market structure. You are going to want to know about Fibonacci retracements, because even as an investor, I'd still want to know about that, because this is like crucial information of why the markets move like they move. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd say to myself, 
at least have some sort of basic understanding of Fibonacci, basic understanding of market structure, basic understanding. Yeah, probably those two main things, Fibonacci and market structure, I could work with. And then from there, I can expand my knowledge. But before I placed any money in the market today, I would want to know very, very, very well market structure and Fibonacci. And from there, I would start to invest. But without that information, without understanding that, I think you are gambling. And right now, it's it's really easy to just put money in and, and lose money. Yeah, it's really, really, really different market conditions than 10 years ago. So, yeah, if you put money in today without knowing what you're doing, it's a gamble. Um, so at least if you have that base education, it's not a gamble, it's more an investment. Yeah, you could argue that it always is a gamble. And I know it's always a gamble, but if you have a base understanding, yeah, you, you, you've got 51% chance in it, 50% chance. Uh, to be honest, I'm not like a really pessimistic guy. I, I, I'm actually really positive and I do believe uh, the good comes to people who work for it or at least have the opportunity. So I, that said, I do think there's going to be major, I think there's going to be like recessions. I think there's going to be a lot of pain and suffering and, and bad things going on in the world overall, which is of course likely going to bring down things such as stock market, cryptocurrency. So I think we have to be at least prepared for this, even if we are really positive, even if we can control our own destiny in that regards, we still have to be aware of external factors around us that we can't control. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that overall, yeah, there's, there's probably more pain and suffering in the overall markets or world to come. But I think at the end of the day, we need to focus on what we can control. What's the point in worrying about something that we have no control over? It's, it's really not helpful for you. It's only going to make you sad and depressed. Whereas if you focus on yourself, your next goal, your next opportunity, something you can control, then at least you can do something positive while everyone else is scared and fearful. It's not helpful to be scared and fearful. You're only gonna, you're only gonna fail. If you can focus on something, small step every day, something that's achievable, something that you can obtain, hey, the world around you can be burning, but if you're in your own little space, happy and positive, hey, I think that's a win at the end of the day. I'm, I'm like a really minimalistic guy, period. Like I don't really, I don't, I don't, you don't really see me going out and buying really expensive things just to buy expensive things or flashing or showing off or anything like that. For me, I, I think the best way you can use your money is, well, there's a few things I would do. First of all, if I was just starting out making money, I'd want to put my money into something that's going to make me even more money. Uh, I think that's the first thing that where people in general would go wrong is make their first that say their first hundred thousand and buy the fifty thousand dollar car. I would do make a hundred thousand, put that in something that's going to generate me more money. Then you reach your first million. Once you reach your first million, don't go out and buy the Lambo. Put go out and buy something again that's going to make you more money. And then once you reach ten million, a hundred million, a plus, then of course you can have more options of buying more expensive things. But that doesn't mean, I mean, I'm not going out tomorrow and buying something that's really expensive just because I have more money now. It's for me. You want to. Always think of something that's going to, you'll be, well, again, you can do whatever you want. Do what makes you happy. I think that's the most important thing. Do what makes you happy. If you want to go and buy the really expensive car, do it. You know, you've got to do it at the end of the day. But for me, with my working and my way of thinking, it's always, is this going to make me more money or is this going to be a burden of me and going to cost me money? And at the end of the day, I know that a new car doesn't make me happy. So why would I buy a new car? Um, it, it makes no sense. So things that would be beneficial or to myself where I'd be like, hey, this is, I'm happy to put money here. Well, of course, an investment, bringing money back, but also things such as charity donations. You know, there's what I don't really like speaking about it so much because there's always this like thing of why do you talk about this on camera? But for me, yeah, like putting money in, going, I'm like really big, um, really big in South America. So I've got like charity work going on in South America. We have like charity we go out to the places where people are literally living with like no roofs. It's like awful, like really, really, really awful. And so for me, you know, I can donate and like change people's lives in that regard. And that's like, that's, um, you know, it's like really like, wow, this is like really crazy. And these people are like so grateful. And so for me, that's like a good use of money. Obviously, like, I think anyone would agree that this is an amazing use of money. So for me, I'd be thinking to myself, especially at the start, you're going to probably want to generate more money. So when you're at your first 10,000, 100,000, I wouldn't be donating everything to charity personally. 
I would be wanting to make something which would generate myself more money. And then when I'm at a stable position and I have spare cash and I have money to do like whatever you want with, then I'd be like, hey, let's move over to focus on something, focus on other people. I've set myself now let's let's share and bring it back to everybody else and and help them up. But again, everyone has their own perspectives, people at the end of the day. I think people love to judge other people of what they spend their money on. And I don't want to be the guy that judges other people. I think at the end of the day, you've got to do whatever you want. It's your money. No one else can really judge you what you spend your money on. But for me, yeah, personally, I would do it in investments or do it in charity work. So the one thing the one thing that I do like to spend money on is watches. Because also though, because watches are also investments. I know I could I mean, this is a good example. This watch, I bought it and then I could sell it the next day for like 15K more. So it's like a no brainer, right? It's a it's a good quality watch. I enjoy wearing it and I could sell it tomorrow for more money than I bought it for. So it's like, for me, watches are brilliant investments, but also I love watches. I, I love looking inside them and the way they work for me is really interesting. Uh, so yeah, watches for me are one thing that I, I happily would have a collection of um, and I wanted to treat myself, yeah, by a watch. Yeah, so it was it was obviously pretty funny the way that Chart Champions first came about, but it wasn't even called Chart Champions when it first started. But it was it was started through uh, the I don't know the right word, just out of nowhere sort of thing. Like I was just doing my thing. I was just on like random forms and talking about Bitcoin, and people were like, hey you actually know what you're on about, um, you know, give us some more information from here. You know, you, I was always a guy that was always on the computer and, you know, had friends all over the world, like via the internet. So for me, it was like kind of cool to just speak about Bitcoin on a form and, uh, you know, give them help and advice. And then from there, you know, I had like just literally like one or two people that were like, hey, uh, you should do a YouTube video. And then I done a YouTube video. And then from there, I have one subscriber that watches my videos. It's like, hey, this is really good information. You should just keep doing videos. Uh, I just kept on doing videos uh, for one guy. And uh, it was it was just like, it was kind of fun because I'd been trading on my own for so long. And then like, yeah, at the time it was just really, it was just like, I don't know, it was just kind of funny to have somebody like watching my watching my video and like understanding and wanting to learn more. Yeah, so I had like this one guy watching my video and it was kind of, yeah, it was just kind of funny to see him wanting more of my content. And then from there, kept on doing videos. Uh, and then obviously, Chart Champions getting cra traction when, when it crashed. And I was one of the only bears in the whole of the market at the time. It crashed, got more viewership, more people interested. And that's sort of where it started to come about. And now for, for me, what I love so much about doing this is because first of all, I love trading like I literally just have a passion and I have a, a, a real love for doing what I do so if I can do what I love or simultaneously like having other people share that love of trading I think it's like a win-win situation I do what I love other people can share that love that's really positive but now on top <coughs> ah, on top of that um, we obviously have the whole educational platform where now people can come in and learn all about trading, learn how to read the markets, learn how to trade the markets. And from there, like some of the messages that we receive are, are like crazy. People are literally changing their lives. People are so, 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 so grateful of what we're doing. Um, it's like, well, first of all, I wouldn't want to stop because I love what I do. Like I would trade if I was doing it for nobody at the end of the day. But then when I have like twofold, I can tr do what I love while also having people to message me like, wow, you've changed my life. Like this is, this is like a even bigger bonus. So for me, yeah, I get questions all the time. Like, why do you still do this? Like, you don't need to work. You know, why don't you just retire and live on an island? I have people saying, why don't you just buy this, buy this, that, but you know, it's like, you know, I have no need to do this. I don't have the need to buy a yacht. I don't have the need to buy an island and live on my own. At the end of the day, I like where I live. I like my circle, I do what I do because I love it. And yeah, so people are, why, why are you still working? I love to trade. Why are you doing chart champions? Because we can literally, you know, literally change people's lives. And for me, that's, you know, that, that, that's uh, something money can't buy. You cannot buy somebody saying you changed my life. You cannot buy somebody like just real 
grateful for what you do and yeah for me that's that's just like really really happy you know, it gives you a really big smile and i think that's one thing that i know is the more money you make does definitely not make you more happy a lot of people always like i need more money and i can buy this i need more money and i'll be more happy i understand for a certain extent yeah if you have more money you can afford to pay your rent of course that's going to make you happy if you can afford your rent but there's this there's not like oh, i make a million and i'm more happy because there's always something else you want there's always more money that you can make there's just from experience i know more money is not going to make you more happy up to a certain point i understand that the bear when you pay your bills yeah you're going to be more happy but past this like more money doesn't equal more happiness and i think a lot of people are really fixated money 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 but they don't really appreciate what they have at the moment and i think when you can appreciate what you have now and really really appreciate what you have now then anything else you gain is just a bonus and yeah, I think the, my final word would be, yeah, just really appreciate what you have. Uh, love love like yourself and love your friends and love your family and understand at the end of the day, like the best moment in life, the best moments in life are free. Um, yeah, and just think about that and, and you'll understand. I think like my biggest fear in life would be like losing my family. Uh, you know, that's something that money obviously can't buy, like health. So, um, yeah, I think like biggest fear would be like losing the people you love and biggest dreams. I mean, this is also something that I, I, I don't actively think of like my dreams and goals. Like I, I feel like I'm living, I'm, I, I hate to be like, I'm living the dream, but I feel like I'm living the dream. Like I wake up every day to do something that I, love, that I like truly love. And so for me, like I am living the dream. Like I wake up, I load up the computer, I, I go over to the charts, I post in Discord. Like for me, uh, if for me then this is living the dream um and i, I don't like don't like to be like to, to, to say that it's like kind of cringy when you say it out loud but yeah I, I suppose when i think about it like i wouldn't really change anything about my life so yeah i, I guess i'm kind of living the dream <laughs> yeah. i would say maybe it's doing something that can be left behind or doing something that you can be remembered for or doing something that's really positive that people are going to be like hey, you remember this guy? Can you remember the impact and what he's done? Like, I think that's that's maybe not the meaning of life, but something like that's really powerful above what you just averagely, averagely like thinking about. Like for me, like the legacy of Chart Champions is something that I'm going to be maybe remembered for when I'm dead. You know, in a hundred years time, there's still people on the website watching the videos like, oh my, I'm learning to trade today via, via Chart Champions. And I, so that's like a legacy of something that can be left behind. Um, so I guess you could think, I'm not really sure if this is the right answer, but the meaning of life, trying to build something that you can be remembered for, or, tr or just trying to build something that's positive that other people can benefit from. Um, yeah, that, that, that would be a good way to live, I suppose. And maybe not the meaning of life, but maybe, uh, yeah, if, you, if you're trying to do something positive for other people, then I think that's a good way to live. uh when i die i would probably just like to have no memory and no thoughts and no just boom, dead and that nothing happens i don't want to be in an afterlife i don't think unless it was some sort of real perfect afterlife where i had a reality and i could troll and i maybe like maybe we're in an afterlife right now right so who knows so if the afterlife is like this and i get reborn as another person hey yeah i'm happy with the afterlife i suppose uh but i wouldn't want to be in some sort of like blacked out universe like in a deaf universe and knowing i'm dead or something like that yeah that would that wouldn't i wouldn't uh maybe i'd like it who knows but i don't think i'd like that but if i was reborn as a human or as something here in in the world then yeah that would be good for me <laughs>